So one of the strangest things that happened during Deserter Songs, and like we were saying, we were at a really dark place, is that neighbors of ours, literally in the mountains, were another group of guys who were classic legends, but they were going through some strange, dark times themselves. And I'm speaking of a group called The Band. Now, if you live in the Catskills or anywhere near there, the band are these mythological creatures. They have this folklore behind them where nearly every turn you make down winding mountain roads, something that one of the band did at one point or dealing with the band happened at that point. You say, oh, that's the part there where Richard drove his car, which was called Dixie, down off the road. And over here is where Bobby lived, and over here is where Bob stayed. And it's, it's, it's everywhere. Just as you guys have all of this around you, for us in the little Catskill Mountains, the band, LaVon, Garth, and Rick, they are these, they are the, they are the landscape. But I'll tell you something, and this is true for more than a few people, that not every great musical legend ends up sipping tea on the lawn of a giant British mansion. It doesn't end up that way for some. And for some, they go through these dark, winding periods of time, and at the same time we were making deserters, some of the band were as well, and that's... I could see that as well. And we took a chance, and we asked LaVon, and we asked Garth, to play on our record. Now, had they heard Mercury Riff before? No, they had no idea. But they just knew us as people and as musicians, and so they came and they played on our album and on some of the songs you're about to hear. And I'll tell you something that I do carry with me all that time. It's not the dark, melancholy sadness, and it's not all of the inner struggles. I carry with me now the way that they carried themselves around us, who were nobodies. But they treated us like people in the studio, like friends, like musicians. With all of their success, with all of how many bands they've influenced, including the Beatles, they never once looked down. And that's something I carry with me, and I know Grassi does as well, because it's so easy to think that, hey, we've got this album called Deserter Songs, look at us. And you forget, and it's easy to forget, that it's just music, but that the way you're here tonight is it's not because we played an E minor seventh chord that nobody ever played before. It's not because we used an oboe in a way that no other one had. It's because the experience is a connection there between us. Because when I'm talking about all this crazy stuff going on in Deserter Songs, I know you guys went through something. You don't have to be an artist to go through these things. You don't have to be an artist to be very bewildered by what's going on around you and going on inside you. And I want to make that clear because it's, I'm really glad about the music, don't get me wrong, but the thing that I've worked hard at for 31 years is being friends with this guy. Yeah. And I know he's very hard. I know it sounds corny, cool sound very rock and roll and I know there's a lot of stories that you can read about me or him that involve drugs and involve alcohol and involve a lot of cliche things but the thing we work hardest at isn't the arrangements it's the friendship and I know you know what I'm talking about because I can see some of around here and I can see the way that you're looking at one another during some of our songs and you're working on the same thing it's just a friendship. That's the real music that we're here. It's not the music itself. It's the friendships. <laughs> 